Hello everyone, my name is Clantis and welcome to my YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's get into today's video because we are talking once again Tabo Besta Saga. It continues. If you remember last week, three people were arrested, accused number 10, 11 and 12 and uh, the case was postponed until the 3rd of July 2023 for bail application. So today being the 3rd of July, the three accused were brought before the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court where a couple of things kind of like happened. Um, if you, I don't know if you paid attention to the live in the court today, you would have seen accused number 10 all smiles, almost looking relieved. To me, that indicated that he knew that he was going home because I had mentioned in my previous video that sometimes before a court starts so that they can cut off many things that will take place inside the courtroom and prolong the process, what the state and the defense attorneys will do will go to the prosecutor's office, they sit down and then they kind of like talk. So it's clear that accused number 10, uh, accused number 10 Tabang Mir's lawyer did uh, basically put it to the state that there were no grounds for accused number uh, 10 to uh, not to be granted bail. Basically, there's no ground for the state to oppose bail. That is then the state, of course, did look into the background of Tabang Mir and then the, indeed they found out that they do not have any ground to oppose bail. And then, of course, they had to look at uh, cues number 11 and 12, uh, which we are going to get into in this video. However, same could not be said about accused number 11 and 12 because they were not really smiling, even though they were smiling and talking with accused number 10, but you could still tell that there was some kind of disappointment look on their faces. It clearly indicated that they were not going home this particular day because of whatever reasons were, and we had to wait in anticipation. And as the court uh, commenced, a new magistrate popped up. And we were like, okay, okay, there's nothing to worry about. Maybe the usual magistrate we are used to probably had other cases to attend to, or maybe took ill and then a substitute was brought. So just to remind you, the three accused, they used to work for G4S, I say G-Force. Um, actually, they are suspended uh, employees of G4S and they were suspended in the light of the Tabo Pesta escape because they were working or they were on duty the morning that Tabo Pesta escaped on the 3rd of May, 2022. So thus far, we know that 12 people have been arrested in the escape of Tabo Pesta. That also includes Tabo Pesta himself and his girlfriend, Dr. Nandi Pamakutumana. So when the court commenced, the state got up and then told the court that they are not going to oppose the bail application of accused number 10, that is Tabang Mir. The state also indicated that they did not find any ground to oppose bail on Tabang Mir. It's because they found that his business was indeed in order. That means the state found as that means the state confirmed that his home address is the correct one. Secondly, he's not a flight risk. Thirdly, he does not have any formal convictions or pending cases against him. So the state then sought an amount of 10,000 rand bail with conditions. So the conditions that were posed on Tabang Mir were Tabang Mir is to, to report to the police station near him every Wednesdays between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Two, he is not to contact or intimidate a list of witnesses attached to his uh, charge sheet. Number three, he is not to leave the magisterial region of Mangawung without first reporting to the investigating officer, Colonel Blyman. There's another one that I did not quite catch. However, Tabang Mir is accused of only one charge, and that is of aiding and abetting the escape of Tower Bester. However, when it came to accused number 11 and 12, the story was a little bit different. The state stood up and said that they intended to oppose bail on accused number 11 and 12. This is when the state then sought to the court that their case be postponed until the 11th of July 2023. I'm suspecting they want to do more investigations so that when they come on the 11th, they know their story as to what on what grounds they are going to oppose bail on accused number 11 and 12. 
So it will be very interesting to know what exactly the state found about accused number 11 and 12 that is making them to oppose bail on the 11th of July 2023. So, of course, this is when the magistrate took over and read out the applications that were made by the state to accuse number one, where he was granted bail of 10,000 rand, and then he was given the conditions that I just read out, and that if he violated any of those conditions, he will be brought back into custody. I think the other one that I forgot about is that he is to appear to all his court cases as per postponed. So that means that also includes uh, his trial at the high court. <clears throat> then the magistrate turned their attention to accused number 11 and 12 and told them that uh, their case is postponed until the 11th of July and they are going to remain in custody. Of course, accused number 11 and 12 are accused of adding and abetting the escape of Tabo Besta, corruption and violating a dead body. And of course, the magistrate then turned to accused number 10, that is Tabang Mir, and said to him he's going to join the other nine accused to appear on the 8th of August, 2023. So there was a question that I was asked about what is the difference between Tabang Mir's uh, bail application which the state just stood up and said it's not going to oppose it, there was no hearing or whatsoever, compared to what accused number one, accused number three, four, five to eight, they went through a hearing where the investigating officer took to the stand and basically uh, told the court why bail should not be granted to these individuals. If I understood the state very well, they cited uh, schedule one meaning that the state had to prove why mr mir would not be a good candidate for bail so meaning that the state would have to go and uh, investigate find the grounds as to why uh, they would oppose bail and then they will give the reasons as to why they oppose bail versus the other two that is accused number 10 and no, accused number 11 and 12 where they cited schedule five where the accused themselves will have to prove to the state or basically prove to the court as to why they are good candidates for bail so that is when a hearing takes place just like we saw with accused number one through to eight of course exception of um uh dr nantua makutumana's father Dr. Makutumana, as well as Tabo Bester. So all the other accused, they went through a hearing where they had to prove uh, on a balance of probability as to why they are good candidates for, um, for bail. And of course, they could not prove to the court as to why they deserve to be bailed and go home and then basically go through the uh, case while they are free people. And uh, so that is what accused number 11 and 12 will also have to go through. And that is why their bail application was postponed to the 11th of July. So on the 11th of July, this is when we're going to see uh, the investigator that is uh, Colonel Blyman once again taking to the stand and saying as to why accused number 11 and 12 should not be granted bail and then the state will also state why they're opposing this bail application and then they will give the grounds uh, as to why it's not going to be in the best interest of justice to let these two uh, go on bail that is accused number 11 and 12. So all of this, at the end of the day, it must be in the best interest of justice or in the interest of justice as to why they should grant bail or why it's not in the best interest of justice to deny the accused bail. So that is the difference that I can come up with. If uh, I'm correct, please do correct me in the comment section if you think I may have missed a step or maybe totally misunderstood the whole process i am more than willing to learn the public gallery always willing to learn that is what we do here and we're also not ashamed of rubbing our two iqs together and come up with some kind of sense as to what is going on just like what my thoughts are regarding this entire saga that had happened today i'm still asking where are the big fish where is the pathologist that examined Katleho Bering's body? Where is the government mortuary manager that released the body? Where is uh, 
<clears throat> Waysa Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Ronald Lamula. Yes, he might not have been involved or probably knew something like this had happened, but this happened under his watch. Why is he not in the dark? Where are Tabo Besta and Dr. Nandipa Magudumana's handlers, those politicians, the people, the money funders? Oh, I almost forgot something. Accused number 10, I think, had a state lawyer and then kind of like said, no, thank you. I will get myself a private lawyer. And then boom, came a guy and said, I'll be representing accused number. It was accused number 10 or 11. Uh, okay. Do comment down below and let me know which one of the three accused that changed lawyers. At first, they had the state uh, provided lawyer. And then that lawyer's uh, services were terminated. And then a new lawyer came. Some guy, I'm not sure if it's Mr. Van der Merwe or Van Weyck, one of the two there. So I thought, okay, that's interesting. Where did the money come from? <laughs> so who are the handlers? Please arrest them. We want to see who the handlers are. I'm not saying that um, Mr. Tabang Mir may not have had money to hire a private lawyer. I'm not saying that at all. But it does ring a question like, from a state-provided lawyer to a private lawyer, because with a state-provided lawyer, you don't pay a cent. But a private lawyer, you're going to have to pay a lot of money. So where did that money suddenly come from? Anyways, that's just me and my two IQs, people. Me and my two IQs just asking these questions. Another question, where are the bank managers that opened Tabo Bester's bank account, where his 817 million rand is stashed? What have we heard about this 817 million rand? Is it frozen? Is it still active? Is it the one that's funding lawyer? What's happening? We want to hear Colonel Blyman is also very quiet. Okay, I understand this is a very sensitive case and he may not be able to divulge a lot of information, but there's 817 million rand that we want to know whether it is still active or frozen. So where are those bank managers that opened that account? Where are they? Because they should be also on the dock. Where are other Tabo Bester's accomplices? I mean, those that were in prison with him, because I think there should have been some prisoners that he managed to recruit and also outside of prison. Where are those people? Once again, those big politicians, where are they? Because they are there. All of this would not have happened without them, without them providing the corridor for Tabo Bester to escape, for Tabo Bester to even end up in Tanzania, where is the better border patrol man or woman or that entire duty? Where are they? Why are they not arrested? Because on that particular day when Tabo Besta and Dr. Nadia Magudumana escaped from South Africa, who was on duty on that particular border gate? Round them all up. Whether that those border gates around South Africa, round them all up and bring them before the courts. Let them answer, let them be the ones that tell us that, hey guys, we have no idea. If it is a uh, 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 military base, uh, airport people, bring them to the dock, please. And this thing of bringing a small fish is becoming rather patronizing to our intelligence. So yeah, there's a lot of people that needs to be brought before the court. Where are they? Why are they being protected? See, I told you this is a syndicate. There's a syndicate that is busy with dead bodies, uh, that is busy with dead bodies, and there's a syndicate that is also busy with giving prisoners money as they uh, money laundering uh scheme and there are also a lot of other people involved in other things that Tabo Pesta needs to spill the beans about. What's happening? Please tell us. We are all ears. Well guys, this is it with this video. If you like the video, give it a like. If you didn't like the video, give it a like anyway. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of this entire saga. Watch the ads. And then also do also share this video far and wide. I highly appreciate it when you guys do that. I do see it in my analytics that you are sharing my videos far and wide. I highly appreciate that. Continue doing so. And let me see you again in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.